Galactic Hamsters. Greetings. I am Peter, and these are my teammates, Alex and Sam. We're the Galactic Hamsters, and we come to you today from a hamster ball far, far away. Located in the Ohio, to be exact. I am the creative lead and the idea man for the Galactic Hamsters, and most of my time was spent working on the visual aids that you can see here and helping out wherever was needed. Our project, called Robotic Rampaging Robot Rodent Roundup, is a game of robotic tag. This robot on the floor is it, controlled by this, which is a robotic remote control in essence. These, the robots and hamster balls, are chased around by it, which tries to tag them with a flashlight. To explain to you the specifics of our robots, how they work, and how they communicate, I give you Sam. Hello, I am Sam, and I'm the lead programmer for the Galactic Hamsters. Um, all of our robots communicate wirelessly using Bluetooth. Uh, specifically, in the chaser and controller robots, the controller has a rotation sensor, which it uses to control the speed of the chaser, as well as two chop sensors, which it uses to control the turning. The chaser itself has a flashlight, which is for tagging the hamster box. It also has an infrared beacon on the back, which it uses to tell the hamster box to run away. It also has a color sensor on the bottom, which it uses to see the colored pieces of paper on the floor, which extend the 60 second time limit. To explain the hamster box, here's Alex. My name is Alex, and I basically built and designed the um, each hamster bot is relatively simple. It has two sensors and two motors. One motor is attached to the ball and is used uh, on a single axis to turn the ball. The other motor uh, rotates the brick from side to side to swing the weight of the brick so that it can turn. One of the sensors is a light sensor, which is used in tandem with a flashlight to tag the robot. The other sensor is an infrared, or IR, seeker that is used with the beacon to um, cause the robots to run away. We will now demonstrate our game for you uh, with Peter Neri. Thank you, Alex. Before we begin, Alex must set the difficulty level of the game by pushing the left button to set it to easy, or the right button to set it to hard, and then the orange button to initiate it. And they're off. Uh, 
there is, uh, let's see what we got here. So there's a fire monster, that's another name of the humanoid. And uh, the motion suit, which is resting on this unbelievably good looking person. Any objections? No? Okay. Uh, back on topic, uh, Plant Buster is connected to the motion suit via Bluetooth, which means it's totally wireless, totally wireless. So, and the Plant Buster has it uses two um, it uses two batteries in the in the shoes, and it has 21 motors. It uses 21 motors, and the reason it looks so shiny and uh, sleek and beautiful is that we designed it ourselves. We designed it entirely, and we ordered the company to do. Uh, production. It's called CNC. It stands for Computer Numerical Control. And we, uh, so it's, it's computers, not humans, that design and produce this uh, robot, basically. Yeah. So, uh, moving on to the uh, motion suit. The motion suit consists of 10 motors, an uh, electric circuit board, plus the uh, metal framers. Uh, and now here's the thing to, uh, to, ca to, to catch the slightest movement of the firefighter. The angle degree of each and every motor implemented in the motion suit from 1 to 330 degrees is uh, transmitted directly to the flame buster here uh, so that with, uh, with no more than a few milliseconds error. So uh, it's pretty sure that the fire, fireman and the flame busters act at the same time. So let's give you a quick demo. So first, the humanoid walks, and this is controlled by the joystick implemented in the uh, motion suit. And there's actually, uh, you can see clearly, there's an LED display on implemented on the left side of the uh, motion suit that displays the concentration of the muscle gas, like carbon monoxide, which is deadly to humans, and the temperature uh, information, so that which is definitely useful to firefighters, and that provides useful information. So, as you can see clearly, as he moves on, same does the uh, human one. Did you see this? Uh, actually, the water. So, uh, there's our job. That's what it did. And, uh, okay, so you now have an idea how a robot works. The fan bus are the most instrumental in putting off fire in cases like um, cable tunnels, basement panels, and other types of fires that is difficult, kind of difficult for firefighters to manage, such as uh, hamster holes. So, someone, someone clearly owes something. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Dan Springer, and I'm the head programmer for the growth and recycling bot. Hi, I'm Spencer Gordon. I'm the co builder and the marketing researcher. Hello, everybody. My name is Josh Anger. I was the marketing spokesperson, if you will, um, and assistant programmer. Hi, my name is Anthony Hall. I'm the lead concept designer and engineer. Now, this robot, as you see here, is supposed to sort recycle. Originally, our prototype robot was for home use, for instead of having like a garbage disposal, you would have a robot in which would sort your recycle. Now, our whole project was based on a human problem. So what we ended up finding out is recycling factories, we have what we call hand pickers that would manually sort of recycle. So this led to the idea of how we could apply this house design into the industry. So here is the industrial prototype that will sort cans, steel, aluminum, and also bottles. Uh, one important aspect that we implied to this is this is going to be going on in the truck. See, when all your recycling gets to your plant, everybody has to hand pick, sort out everything. By the time that they get to the plant with this in their truck, everything will be sorted, and all they have to do is take them out of the bins and they're right along. Uh, we actually came up with this idea, we read through the news, and it's worked for Fort Wayne. Uh, our recycling plants are in hard times. Uh, they're losing more money than they're gaining, and it's time to do something about it, because you're paying for it with your tax money, because the government is paying for it. Um, so by doing this, it'll cut down the cost of labor, 
Yeah. 